Chris Straub, the owner of Straub Technologies, and here we're here to look at the Axe Blue Max cleaning system. I'm going to review a few things of the Axe system and the reason that I purchased this system uh, from Axe Equipment. One, Axe is noted quality in the industry. Uh, it's an old company with high quality product that's been around quite a, quite a long while. One thing we like about the sealing system on the Axe is there's no gasket to fail. The system easily comes out, slides, because your door is actually your offloading ramp. The other thing, the Blue Max system is actually a two, two systems in one, because you actually have a soaking tank down here. So you can actually load a block, have something in here soaking, load heads or anything else into the system here, have the system running. The other thing, it's fully programmable. This system, you can program and have it heated so you're not losing any time, valuable time, while it's trying to get to temperature. The other thing too is, there's an optional skimmer system which helps as far as keeping your chemical uh, to full potential for cleaning the stuff, which really helps for cost effectiveness. We chose the built-in Davit system, which is also an option because it allows easy access from the washing system or the wash tank into the wash down cabinet. The wash down cabinet has a turret and a carousel that you can put the parts, easily spray things down. It comes with a feature that it will recycle any of the water that it captures in the tank. So you're not wasting water. You can be using the same water over and over again and to dispose of that water after it's uh, past its prime as far as washing the parts down and then reuse for the fresh water. It comes with a full shield, uh, telescopes up, and the system. What we like about this wash down tank uh, is that, honestly, if you've got a rolling cart in your shop, that's the only other part that you need. With the Davit system, it's easily to unload. You're not having to use a cherry picker or any other type of equipment in the shop to be able to load. So really, one man can do this. So instead of two people, the automation in this system and the type of wash system that it is allows one person to do really the work of two men. And in today's times, what we try to do is automate, not populate. And Axe has helped us with that and being able to be much more efficient in the machine shops as far as cleaning parts. And as we all know, cleanliness is next to godliness and the Axe system works great for Straub Technologies. Now we're gonna go a little bit more in depth into the AX system. So we're gonna go now to some video on the AX system in action so you can actually see this baby work. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Straub. I'm here at Straub Technologies and we're gonna take a look at the AX equipment Blue Max system jet wash. This is the 28 inch model that will handle any of your gas V8 engines and up to a coming six cylinder on the 28 inch carousel. Let's take a look at some of the things that separates Axe from the rest in the industry. Axe's biggest and most unique system is that the door is actually a loading part of the loading system and so it serves as a platform to put your parts on. You simply release the hinge and this is a spring loaded door that comes down this allows you easy access to bring a cart system in or use the optional uh, davit system that Axe can mount on the system. You simply pull the carousel out. Fixturing that comes with the system allows you to connect cranks, cylinder heads, or any other items that you may need to wash. You slide the system back in. This is a positive gear mesh on the turntable and Axe uses a full two inch tube system allowing for a hundred gallon per minute flow of water and cleanser cleaning your parts efficiently. You then lift the door up and while I'm lifting it up you need to notice there's no gasket material. The sealing system and the way the Axe is designed there's no gasket to ever replace so you don't ever have to worry about any release of chemical agent or steam into the shop. You lift the door up and you've got your positive hinge to hinge the door. Now this system, the Blue Max, is actually two in one. This actually also has a soaker tank that allows you to put your blocks in. 
So once you've loaded the system with your heads and other parts, you simply lift this lower system up, which has an integral basket, and the tooling that comes with the system allows you to pull this basket up. You can load a block in here and have it pre-soaked. Since the blocks are usually the greasiest and grimiest as most, your other parts are getting jet washed, your block's soaking. Once you pull your other parts off the carousel system, now you can remove the block from the soaker tank and put it in the carousel system for additional cleaning. This has a self-locking mechanism so that the hood cannot collapse on you. You simply release the lock system, bring it down, and your block soaking. Let's wash some parts. At Straub Technologies, we use Silver Seal for our chemical needs for anything in the shop. Citrus Spray is one of their most popular that they sell for the jet wash type cabinet systems. It is our personal favorite and this is what we use at Straub Technologies. For every 100 gallons, you need about 15 pounds of Citrus Spray. This is available in these 5 gallon pails, 50 pound and up to 100 pound barrel type deal. So depending on your needs in the shop, you can order this in bulk. Let's fill the system up with some citrus spray. Optional with the Silver Seal Cleaning Cleanser for the jet wash type systems. Silver Seal offers what they call foam control. This is an option that you can or cannot use. We feel it's a good idea just in case to avoid any messes in the shop with any foaming. Now, in Tennessee, we count by onesies, twosies. You need three ounces of foam control in your jet wash per 100 gallon. And in Tennessee, that's one, two, three. Let's see how our Blue Max did today. I always have a shop rag with you. 165 degrees is a little hard on the fingers. And as you can see, our LT heads have come out very nicely. So let's get these over to the rinse station. Now you can see the results of our Axe Blue Max system and our cylinder heads and how clean the system has gotten. This system comes with a seven and a half horsepower motor, a 100 gallon tank for reserve as far as your chemical and your water system. It's a fully uh, insulated electrical system. It comes with a seven day programmable system for your heating element and digital heat control. Options include an optional skimmer that will pull any of your excess oil and skim the top for better results with your cleaning agent. It also is available in an insulated type model, so in hot climate, your axe machine is not heating up the shop uh, where your employees are working. Here's the optional davit system that comes with 
and mount it on the machine. There's nothing that you have to do as far as mounting in the concrete because it's attached to the jet spray system. And here's our optional wash cabinet next to the machine. This can be used in two different ways. We can use it to fill the system because we can plumb these two systems and plumb water right into it. We can also shut incoming water in and we can recirculate from the tank and the pump that's inside this system. Your optional splash guard is easily mounted and easily reached and, and put in position. We turn the uh, system on by using this switch for the internal pump. So we'll be using water that's already stored in the tank so that we can conserve water at the shop. As you can see, the AX system is self-contained with, with both options and non-options. Here at Straub Technologies, AX is part of what we do in the performance world where we work every day. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris Straub and we're here live at the Engine Performance Expo and we're going to have Perry from Axe Equipment. Now, in the times that we live, we've had a little technical difficulty, so you'll be able to hear Perry and he'll describe the Axe cleaning systems, but you won't be able to see Perry because, hey, we just got through 2020, 2021. Perry, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your, uh, your uh, company, uh, yourself, and um, uh, the equipment that you sell, sir. Well, thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Perry Crab. I'm a sales manager here at Axe Equipment. I uh, started here in uh, about 1988. Um, it's a private corporation owned by the Axe family, Danny and Donna Axe. Started uh, building these cleaning systems back in 1984. Um, the company at first initially introduced a cylinder home back in the late 70s and migrated to uh, spray washer cabinets in July of 84. In, uh, July, in about 1991, Axe bought a uh, pressure testing system from the old Tehoff company, started making pressure testers in the early 90s. Um, and as we progressed, our cleaning, system, our cleaning uh, line got deeper and broader and, and so forth. Um, today, we offer about 35 different models of spray washer cabinets. Um, as you see this video, Chris had, uh, we've also got a water recycling rinse booth set next to this jet washer. The washer you're looking at is one of our performance models. It's a, uh, it's called our Blue Max series. It's a SW2832. All the Axe machines have got built-in hot tanks in the front. Um, it's what we call a combination spray washer hot tank. So, and you'll notice the one you're looking at, it's got a, um, it's a 24 by 34 inch hot tank in the front. So you could, in essence, you could soak two small block chivies in the front and be watch spray washing a block up in the top. Something unique to this Axe machine, and you'll notice all of our machines use lay down doors. So Mr. Axe, <laughs> funny story, he, and I'll just kind of share it with you. I think he laid on the floor for many hours looking at his Sears dishwasher, I believe to come up with that lay down door. But it's one of the very unique features we have. All of our doors are laid down, and here's why we like those. It keeps, when we're, much like a dishwasher in your house, it keeps the floor a lot drier, and like, you don't have all the spill on the floor. So that's why he came up with that, because everything was so sloppy out there. So we have a lay down door, 
makes uh, keeps the shop you know much drier. It's really easy to load and unload. Again, just like a dishwasher in your house. So this machine you're looking at um, was really designed for studded performance blocks. It's a big 28 inch diameter turntable, but it's only 32 inches vertical, which is really all you need in the performance sector. Um, again, Axe offers about 35 different models. We go from spray washer cabinets that are 20 by 32 inches, like for a big block Chevy, all the way up to a system that would hold a, um, a big Caterpillar block. Or even systems that have four independent turntables. Um, it's, just, it's just a lot of different models for a lot of different places that we go. But again, they're all laid outdoors. They all have the built-in hot tanks. They're all insulated, keeps all the, all the heat inside. Um, you can get them in gas heat, electric heat, single phase, three phase. Um, another thing about, another nice feature on these Axe machines is the gear drive. So you know, to, to clean a block, to clean parts, you have to have three things. You have to have a good heating system, you gotta have a good pumping system, and you gotta have a, a, a turntable, a drive system that's turning. Um, so, and what Axe did is he put a gear drive back in the corner, so it's, your turntable is always going to be rotating. Um, and the manifold system that Mr. Axe came up with was very um, much different than anybody else's. It's all the little things he did. He put radius elbows in the piping system instead of these sharp 90s, so all the water would flow real well. Um, and something you think about, everybody when they buy these washers, it's like, well, how much pressure does it have? And I think pressure's all good, but you gotta have a lot of water flow too. And a great analogy of that would be going to the car wash. You know, these car washers have pressures of probably 2,500 pounds, but they really don't start cleaning until the car gets real wet. So that was the concept behind Mr. Axe's idea was, not only do we want pressure, but we want a lot of water flow, a bunch. And uh, so when he designed his manifold, he made sure everything flowed, flowed really nice. Um, the heating systems that we have inside these, you can go gas heat or electric heat. Um, all the heaters um, are stainless steel. While you can't go down and spend you know, $20 to replace one, if you take care of these heaters, they'll last you 20, 25 years. Or you can get them in a gas heating system. And if you're out looking at a washer to buy, if you call us and you ask us, what do you prefer? Do we prefer gas or electric? The gas outperforms electric two to one. So you've got this jet washer. We like to run temperatures of about 180 or 190 degrees. And when that pump comes on, you get a big, you can get a temperature drop as much as 30 degrees. A gas heater machine will heat that 30 degree loss up in about 10 minutes. Where electric, you're gonna be waiting three times that amount, maybe a half hour. So as you're looking to buy a washer, gas is always going to be your, your biggest performer. It's going to, it's going to outperform electric two to one. It just, it just burns so much hotter. And it's about 20% less to operate a gas heater machine as is electric. Uh, so something to think about as you are looking to get a washer. Um, another, another thing is, is uh, we can get you three phase, single phase, we can get you 460, 480, all the voltages, we, we, uh, we, we can supply all the different voltages. Um, something about these washers that people should consider when they're buying them is, how are you gonna handle all the waste out? So here you are, you've got this washer. Um, Mr. EPA man comes in and says, hey Chris, how long have you had this washer? Chris says, I don't know, I've had it 10 years. And the guy says, well, so Chris, what do you do with all your stuff out of that washer? So Chris probably better have a, a good answer. So with these washers comes a little bit of responsibility, that is taking care of all the mud that's gonna come out of the bottom. And as you look at the video, you'll see we have a rinse we're setting next to it. So what we basically has done is we've given you a place to rinse your, your box at, and we, what we're looking for is a zero discharge of water into the drain in the shop. So again, I'm going back to the EPA responsibility. 
you should, once your, your chemical becomes dead, it's no longer useful, you should drain your water out into some type of drum, take the mud out, or the, or the sludge if you will, put it in a deep DOT drum, put your water back in and go again. But, so when the guy comes and asks Chris, well Chris, what are you doing for your sludge? You need to have an answer. Whether you're having a safety clean, come and get it, and take it off premises, or whether you're storing it yourself, and then having safety clean, come and get it. Safety clean will come in and pump all your water out, and your sludge, it's a service they offer, but it's expensive. So a lot of guys will clean it up themselves and keep the mud and have safety clean come and get it when he's got 55 gallons of mud. And that might, a two or three man shop, it would take you, I would say two or three years to develop that much sludge. Cause you're gonna put it in the drum and all this, these particulates are gonna fall down. You might have a bunch of water on the top and take it back out. My, the point I'm trying to drive here is as you buy these washers, also you gotta have a plan of how you're gonna handle all this waste that you're gonna be developing because you're going to. The rinse booth that's sitting next to the washer is what we call a water recycling rinse booth. So what we do is we wash the block, we take the block and we put it in the rinse booth and, we, and we're gonna rinse it. We're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go do our boring and our hoeing and so forth. We're gonna come back, we're gonna wash it, another quick wash, and then the final time in a rinse booth, we're gonna use fresh water and we're gonna do a final rinse. That fresh water is gonna fall into the bottom of the booth. So, as I was telling you, these washers will heat up to about 180 degrees. They're gonna evaporate three to five gallons of water a day. So instead of Chris taking this fresh water hose over there and filling up this washer, just recycle that water from that rinse booth back to the jet washer and use it for makeup water. That jet washer doesn't need fresh water. And if you and if you look at the setup Chris has there, there's a hose running from the rinse booth to the side of the washer. So what Chris basically has is a, in essence, a system, not just a washer, he's got a cleaning system where everything is contained, he has no drain. He's keeping his sludge so Chris has an answer for Mr. EPA when he comes in. So again, as you buy these washers, it's something to think about how you're gonna handle all these different waste products that are gonna come with it. The chemical really is not the problem. The problem is all the lead contents you're washing out of blocks and heads, and then those, all those heavy metals fall down eventually and into the sludge. And that's what they don't want. They don't want you throwing this sludge out, on the, out in the yard. Because what they contend is that all these little heavy metals are gonna leach out of this sludge and go into the ground and contaminate. So again, it's, uh, it's a little bit responsible to come to these washers and, and the ax has gone a little bit farther and, and, and give you a water recycling rinse booth. And back on the cleaning side, Axe made the washer, if you lift the hot tank lid up in the front and you take the filter basket out, everything is accessible to get in there and clean it out. So it's not like you have to crawl inside it to do it. He's, uh, Mr. Axe made it, you know, he made it where it's easy to service. So it's, again, you don't have to get in there because that stuff's not real nice to be around anyway. Talk a little bit about Everybody wants to know, hey, what kind of chemical do I use to clean with? Well, if you're cleaning aluminum, obviously you're gonna use an aluminum cleaner. It's, a, it's not a really aggressive cleaner because it's a, the aluminum is or soft materials. But if you're cleaning cast iron, it, you, it'd be nice if you had a really aggressive cleaner because it will take the paint off and some of the carbon. But once you have a cast iron cleaner in it, then you can't put aluminum in it. So it's kind of a, it's a little bit, it's almost an expensive proposition. If money was no object, it'd be nice to have a jet washer, one for aluminum and all the final wash, and then one for cast iron. That's an, that's an ideal situation, and a lot of the bigger shops are like that. So they'll bring a filthy cast iron block in, put it in a washer that's got a cast iron cleaner in it, 
and it'll really, it'll clean really really well. But I can't put aluminum in. So now they got another washer that's got an aluminum cleaner in there. They run all their aluminum through there, and then after they do their boring and their honing or all their machine work, all the cast iron will go through the aluminum washer because all we're doing is final washing it with say some honing oil or boring chips or what have you. So again, as you get a washer, if you've only got one and you're doing both cast and aluminum, you only have one option and you're gonna have to use an aluminum cleaner. You're gonna get 80% of, of, the, of the, the paint, but you're not gonna get it all. It's just not gonna do it. It's, it's just so, it doesn't have as much cost activity in it as the cast iron cleaner. So again, ideally two jet washers and a water recycling rinse booth is ideal, but you know, if the budget's not there and the space in there, you only have one so you're gonna to have to use an aluminum cleaner. Um, here's another, so when you're, when all these washers, you have to have a chemical that has a built-in rust inhibitor. If you don't, you got big trouble because that washer is gonna start rusting up in about one week. Um, so as you look for chemicals, make sure that it's a got a built-in rust inhibitor. Otherwise, your cabinet's gonna be, uh, it, it's going to die pretty quick. It's going to start rusting up pretty quick. Um, a lot of times, the chemicals that you buy won't have minutes, so you make sure you ask. But the, also, the machines, a lot of times people call and say, well, hey, the machine's foaming on me, and, and what's, what's wrong with the machine? Those machines know nothing about chemicals. If you start foaming in a jet washer, there's a couple of reasons. It's either under temperature or undercharged. But I'm going to give you a third one that's going to really, you're going to kind of sit back and ponder the thought. So I get a call one day, customer says, my machine's foaming, and we couldn't figure out what it was. Come to find out, this customer was taking in blocks and heads from a pork producing plant, and it had animal fat on it. Killed the chemical right off. I mean, with so be careful if you have foaming problems and you're not under temperature and under the charge, you might look at what you're cleaning. Um, as odd as this sounds, we've had people bring in their barbecue grates out of their barbecue grills and try to clean them. And once that animal fat gets in there, it's you're, you're pretty much done. So again, the biggest problem is under temperature or under charge. You're gonna have to, these temperatures on these washers, on, our, on the axe washers, we don't even let you run temperatures less than 140. And we don't let you run more than 200. Anything under 140, you're going to foam. Anything over 200, it wants to boil and cavitate and don't want to pick up water. So it's a very poor performing. Any, anything over 200 just doesn't perform very well. So on our machines, if you see the front of that washer, it's got a real nice digital temperature controller. And it tells you, we, we have parameters set where you can't go below 140 or, two, or above 200. Again, I can't emphasize the fact enough, temperature is really, really, really important. Um, again, we like to run about 170, even up to 200. Um, especially in the cast iron stuff, if you're trying to get a lot of paint off, and a lot of carbon, 190 to 200 with a good chemical, a good turntable, that axe machine will chew that stuff up pretty quick. Uh, an average wash cycle is 20 minutes. You're gonna have a, 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 a silver head that comes in, it might take 10, but a block that might take 35. So when people ask us, we kind of do an average of 20, a 20 minute wash cycle. Um, something else on these washers, you're gonna have to cut a hole, you're gonna have a steam vent. The steam has got to exit somewhere. So you're going to have to either cut a hole in the roof or in the sidewall. And if you've got a gas heating machine, you've got two holes to cut. Another one for the gas vent. Ideally, we would like the gas vent to go straight up above the highest peak of the roof because we're looking for uh, air draw across the stack so we can get, so we can get air flowing across it so, it so it flows right all the air coming out of the gas vents. Um, 
these gas burners that we have, we just newly designed our heat exchangers in 2018. Um, these, a lot of times we'll get people that call and their, their burner tube has is, is got liquid coming down it or so forth. And the problem is they've not got their gas burner set up right. What they might have done is they might have just hooked it up themselves and not had anybody come in with manometers and try to set their gas burners up. You have to run stack temperatures of at least 325 degrees. Otherwise, you're going to condensate inside the gas tube. And all the condensation is going to run in your tube, and you're going to rot your burner tube out long before it should, should rot out. So as you're... As you as you do these gas burners, you got to have those things set up right. I got to tell you, these jet washers are the most um, mistreated products in the whole shop. Nobody likes to work on them. I really wouldn't want to work on them either. They're, they can be filthy. They can be caustic. So nobody wants to work on them. But it's the very first thing we got to have. So Fair. it's something to think about. You gotta, you you gotta spend a little bit of time. Like our boring machines, our honing machines, or our guidance seat machines, our balancers. Everybody takes real good care of them. They wipe them off. They're pretty and beautiful. Go back into a cleaning room. In most cleaning rooms, they're filthy. Perry, can you touch uh, on your optional skimmer? Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, yeah on that on that washer, you're gonna see an optional oil skimmer sitting off to the side. Um, and <laughs> actually really hit a home run on this one. They had looked at a bunch of oil skimmers, and every time we looked at one, there's this big gaping hole, and all this steam's coming out of this hole. So if you look at our oil skimmer, it's enclosed with a lid on it. We don't have any heat escaping out of it. Um, oil, that's, a, that's an 11 inch skimmer disc. I'm gonna, oil is a very, very tough nut to crack. Um, we are, we're not gonna claim to get 100% of the oil out of there. We're going to probably claim more half of it. Um, it's just, um, it's a big tank with a little wheel, and trying to draw all that oil to the wheel sometimes can be a challenge. But also, as we all know, oil is lighter than water. Don't ever try to skim hot because you're just, you're wasting your electricity because the chemicals are designed to keep the oils emulsified, broken up. Let that skimmer come on about 3 in the morning when that water is cold, all the oil has come to the top. That's the time to skim. And we have a timer, automatic timer set up in our um, electrical box that you can time that skimmer to come on. So um, skimmers are great because they will keep, they will cut down a lot of that oil, oil you, they'll get some of that oil out of there. But not all of it, it's not, you can't go drink it the next day. Um, it's, you know, trying to dry my poor home, it's not going to get it all, but it is going to help you. And it's a nice little option uh, to have. But again, when you look at our skimmers, you're not going to see some big gaping hole for all the steam to escape out. So it's, it's a nice little feature. If you look at that wash, we also, uh, X has got a really nice um, boom and crane assembly. If you'll look at that, if you look at that, uh, that washer there, and it will go, you know, you know, you can, I think those are 500 pound weight capacity. So really nice, you can pick the, the blocks up off the washer and put it into the wrench booth or, or vice versa. Those cabinets are all insulated too. Uh, really nice, keeps all the heat that's inside the cabinet. Um, uh, insulated cabinet at 180 degrees, when you turn the pump on, you'll get about a five degree temperature drop. On an uninsulated cabinet, you're gonna get about a 30 degree temperature drop. So now the burner's gotta come back on and heat back up. So, insulation is going to cost you a little bit more, but it's going to save you more. And these washers are expensive. They can they start at about nine thousand dollars, and they can go up to thirty-five thousand. Um, but when you look at these washers, the the initial investment is high. But if you look at it over twenty-five years, it's really not that not too bad. Um, so it. it Nobody likes buying the washers because they're an expense. Perry, they, Perry yes, if you could if you could sum it up as far as the quality on Axe and 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 what you all feel your strong points are, uh, mm -hmm. so that we can go. We're going to go to a video here, but in your words, 
In your last words, what would you say as far as Axe and your selling point to the industry, sir? What makes our, our washer so unique is those lay down doors and those built in hot takes. And that, those two options set us apart from everybody else anywhere. Nobody else, that sets us apart from anybody. Well, per Perry, we really appreciate your time today and being part of the yeah. Engine Performance Expo. And uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing what comments and questions come over line. And we'll be emailing those questions to you, sir. Okay, I'll just, uh, uh, well, thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. I'm Phil S. the designer and founder of Ultrasonic LLC. Today we're going to be cleaning uh, clean parts, actually. When we glass bead an intake manifold or hone a block or do any kind of cleaning or machining like that, we actually impregnate material into the part. So now we need to clean that out of, out of the part. So a lot of times when you clean a cylinder wall, you can actually wipe the cylinder wall of a block out, but you really can't clean the rest of the part. And the time that we can save and clean the cylinder wall and getting a precision clean part. You just precision machine your parts, now we need to precision clean them. So we're going to demonstrate today in the Ultra 3200 FA, which has agitation, side mounted transducers that actually enhance the cleaning of the machine. And we're going to clean part of the manifold so we can see a witness mark of where we actually clean and didn't clean. So right now we just hit cycle start of the machine and you're going to notice it's agitating up and down and in and out. And then we attack the parts from both sides. Look at the dirt coming out of there. Look at that dirt. Can you see that? So the agitation actually flushes the dirt out of the part as it cleans. That's pretty cool. One thing you got to be mindful of is that it has to be underwater. So if you cap, captive an air pocket in the part, it won't clean where there's air at. So sometimes we have to take the part and flip it around underwater to get the air pocket out of the part so it actually will clean it. So now when the part gets done, it turns an automatic filtration on that actually cleans all the dirt and debris that would float on top of the water. It puts it over in a small tank called a weir tank. Down in this tank, we could install our absorbent tube that collects all the oil that floats over into that tank. It's cleaning up inside here now. We don't have it all the way down in there, but there's no sand left in any of this part of the manifold. There's still sand up in here. You can still feel it. When it dries, it should dry and, and look much cleaner. Uh, and so as we, as we clean the part, it allows us to have a precision clean part. You don't want sand. You don't want dirt in your, in your engine. You really can't clean it well enough by hand. You actually, the ultrasonic will clean where you can't touch, see, or feel. That's the beauty of ultrasonics. And it'll get down in all those little nooks and crannies and all that stuff and clean. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually clean the lifters. We hang the lifters down in a special fixture so the roller bearings will hang down in the solvent. Now we're going to set this down into the ultrasonic tank like so and we're going to turn this on for like 10 minutes and we're going to let it clean and we're going to look down inside here and you're going to see a lot of dirt that comes out of the lifter and once we get, doing, get finished with that, once we're finished cleaning the lifter and the solvent, we're going to take it and put it in heated oil so we can actually put the oil back into the lifter with ultrasonic. That way it's lubed and ready to go to be installed in the engine. So once it's done cleaning, we'll take them out and we'll set them here. So now we're going to inspect the lifter. So now we got all the oil out of the lifter and we're going to actually raise the lifter up and we're going to, we're going to feel the roller bearings and make sure they feel good. There's no debris in them, no kind of grit. They feel good, no flat spots on the bearings. And once we've addressed that, we're going to take it and put it in our oil. This is a heated oil. We're going to move it over here into our heated oil. 
And now we're gonna turn it on for five, 10 minutes. We'll go 10 minutes. And now what we're doing is we're ultrasonic. We're, we're actually putting the oil back into the lifter with ultrasonics. So it's petroleum, but still cleaning, and it's lubricating, and it'll be ready to go in the engine. Thank you. What a day, what a day, what a day. Day one of the Engine Performance Expo in the books. Lake, I, yeah, uh, my, brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. It is, this is exactly what we hoped it was going to be. And we had you know, some, you know, clip of glitches. I had a problem with the iPad today, but, you know, but I mean, <laughs> this is something brand new. And these guys brought it. Yes. You know, from John Cowley's, I mean, the, we had John Cozzi and those yeah. guys asking questions from the audience. So to me, it was exactly what we had hoped it was going to be. Hopefully the viewers, you guys out there and ladies have enjoyed this and it's what you had expected it to be as well. It's been a fantastic journey today and we're just getting started. More days to Professor of Pro Stock Warren Johnson's going to be in. We're going to have a really great time. And you know, I, I know a lot of people and I've been following a lot of the feedback out there because, you know, we want to know. And uh, a glitch here or there, right? What do we do? We steamroll right through it. And that's the, the race mentality if you got to refresh you refresh if we've got a camera go down we're just gonna mow right through it and get to the point because it's all about finding the information and that's what we did I think we succeeded in getting the information out to people and getting people who are interested in whatever the arena whether it be balancing or otherwise uh, the information they need oh yeah, the information of the day was fantastic like we started off the day the idea is the block is that foundation the cornerstone of the engine and we progress steadily from machining that block honing it and going through all these considerations balancing the pistons we've got our short block ready so tomorrow we're moving into the valve train nice and it's going to be fantastic billy godbold's going to be here or not here live right because that's all things i mean just we're you we're working around the situation but, but yes here though as in together here at engine performance expo from wherever they happen to be and that is the whole point the whole conversation is that this is changing the game in that people are going to be able to watch this learn share it go back watch again a certain segment a certain part that was interesting to them you know at a trade show not everything is interesting at the same time people are going to be able to mine this and find good stuff so we've got two more days we start 10 p.m eastern time tomorrow so be here uh, right on time 10 gonna... a.m eastern time what did i say i think you said p.m but yes, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm correcting no, the guy, think, right? No, let, the, right. let the host be the host and no, the color guy shut yeah, up. Yeah, except you're right. It's 10 a.m., but <laughs> 10 a. I, yeah. I think that is the status of all of us right now. A.m., <laughs> p.m., does it really matter anymore? Lake, it's been great. Oh, Joe, it's been fantastic. Thank you for being our guide, our host to this wonderful event. And again, I can't wait for tomorrow. Another action-packed day. Tons of information in your performance expo everything I hoped it had been. 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning, Lake Speed Jr., myself, Joe Costello, and a great team behind the scenes, by the way. This didn't happen yes. by accident. Big round of applause to those folks, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Engine Performance Expo at EnginePerformanceExpo.com. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us don't start cars, we are not going to listen.